Good evening. <laughs> I can't stop. I, you know, the funny thing is that I can't actually stop laughing about all this. Also, the mask is just to keep things mildly colorful and entertaining to start to realize the wall is very white. I was going to do this from the chateau, but um, the evening has been kind of crazy. I was working here all day, uh, met with Joe Athletic for a drink and came back here. And, uh, and now I'm back here because it was much closer and I wanted to make sure that I was on time. I have some notes and uh, some people to thank. <laughs> uh, but it's actually, it's mostly, I think it's mostly funny to me now, <clears throat> but I have a couple stories tonight. So the, here's the format for the evening because I feel like I should hit format right off the bat. And I appreciate that you're all here waiting to hear my, uh, you know, really stupid, uh, well, not that stupid. It's just normal story, to be honest. Um, I have, I have two stories that I thought about telling tonight. I'm definitely going to tell you one. Uh, about how I got uh, robbed. Uh, the first time I've ever gotten stolen from in Paris. I've never, actually it's not true. There's another time I got stolen from in Paris, so I can tell that story as well. So maybe three stories tonight. But the first time that I've ever personally uh, been successfully uh, robbed, um, I guess is the right verb for it. Um, I've actually caught other pickpockets. I've caught pickpockets in, the, in, in action, trying to steal from friends of mine before. Um, I'm usually very aware usually like really paranoid. I, I'll tie my bag around my leg or, you know, I always put it in the right spot. I'm, I'm always aware because it has my life in it. My backpack always has my life in it. And uh, I'll tell you about how I, uh, you know, let my guard down once and it, it didn't go super well. Uh, I'll try to respond to comments and stuff here in a minute. Um, maybe at the end, because I feel like most of you are probably here for story time and maybe a little bit less uh, for, uh, you know, me just talking to you endlessly in the comments but I really appreciate that everybody says hi. Uh, but yeah, I was, I'm fine, I'm safe. And it, there was no physical violence involved before anybody freaks out. Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't have said that because maybe now you don't want to listen to the story, but I, I see a bunch of knife questions popping up. So I'm gonna go ahead and say no knives were involved uh, whatsoever. Um, if, I, and thank you to everybody. I've seen, I also saw a couple comments um, about uh, wanting to help. If you want to help, I really appreciate that. Um, it was brought to my attention watching another live stream recently. I just hadn't thought about it, but if you would like to help, I put a link below to Kofi and I'll talk about that more at the end. It's not, that's not entirely the point of this, but I would, I'm opening it up because a lot of people have said that they would like to help me out uh, to get you know back to being able to edit. And I appreciate that. Um, and, cause, and, and I was gonna discourage uh, Super Chat. Obviously if you want to Super Chat, that's totally fine. Uh, but YouTube takes like 40% of everything that gets super chatted. So I made sure to put my Kofi link below and uh, retitled it. Thank you, Tim. I still appreciate it. I still very much appreciate it. Um, and thanks for that little flying Superman. That is all the way across my face, actually. So there's no way I can miss that. Um, but <laughs> too late. It's fine. Honestly, it's it's totally fine. I'm not, I'm just, I was just going to say, if you want it all uh, to get to me, then uh, Kofi's really good for that. You can go buy computer chips. I set the goal um, delightfully low. Uh, well, not delightfully though, something good that's very helpful, but um, I, I, the goal is not to be greedy or anything, but for those of you that wanted to help out, I'd really appreciate it. And if we blow past that goal, it'd be even more helpful. But you came here for story time, not for that. I actually have a bunch of people to thank that I will, I'll jump in to thank after I tell you the preliminary story, which is the first time I ever got robbed in Paris. I, I don't think robbed is the right word. It's like stolen from, it's pickpocketed, but it's not really pickpocketed um, when it has nothing to do with your pockets is what it feels like entirely when you still have you know, your pockets and your bags left. The first time was when I was actually a tour guide. I was, I was a bike tour guide here in Paris and we would go on our routes and I went on the inverted, the inverted route. So I, uh, with Bike About Tours, everybody did kind of a figure eight um, that had been standard and they taught me the inverted route because uh, they were trying to see if they could get us all kind of out of each other's hair. And so instead of starting on like, let's say the right hand loop, I would start on the left hand loop and then do the right hand loop. So you still go in the same direction. You just switch the order in which you do halves of uh, the whole. And uh, I had my lunch in a different spot than everybody else, near Le Al, not far uh, from where the Saturday night's events would occur later. This is like three years ago, three and a half years ago, three summers ago, taking our lunch break. And we we're at Fontaine des Innocents. I have some pictures from the other night, by the way. So when we get to like this weekend's events, I have a couple photos for you so you can get a feel for the lay of the land. At that time, if you don't know where Fontaine des Innocents is or the Fountain of the Innocents, it is this really big ornate, it's the oldest ornate fountain in the city. It's right by Le Al, uh, the big mall on the corner there. And it was a great spot to stop because you had the fountain and a, and a great spot to sit. 
Uh, Leal is famous for his petty crime, so you got to be alert. And I always was. Like, I would always line the bikes up and sit facing the bikes while I ate my lunch. You know, I still talk to people, but kept an eye on them. And then one day, we, like, we got up. It's like, all right, how's everybody's lunch? That's great. Let's go. And we got up, and then someone was missing their bike. <laughs> and it's just like, how? how? How are you? How? What? Like, I must have just been, like, turned around to talk to somebody. And in that moment... It was gone, and thankfully there were a couple that had practiced. They were getting married, so I think they were engaged. And uh, for a photo shoot, they had practiced riding one bike, so they could take photos riding one bike together. And so they actually rode their bike all the way back to the garage where we keep the bikes. Um, the two of them on one bike, they made it, and uh, and we managed to get them another bike and carried on as if nothing had ever happened. Of course, I felt terrible because uh, Bike About lost one of their bikes, which was not great, not what I wanted. Uh, but that was the first and only time I'd ever been successfully stolen from in Paris until this weekend. And this weekend, uh, it's, it's still kind of a shock. It's still kind of a shock. I still, it's weird. And I'll, and I'll tell you why here in a minute. But first, um, there have been some people that have been really proactive in reaching out. And I wanted to thank them. I wanted to call them out because a lot of people, like I said, have reached out to ask how they can help. And some people have already done it. Innes Pagan, uh... Uh, Debbie Hogshed, I had to write all this down because I guess who doesn't have a computer anymore. I had to actually write all your names down. So if I wrote it poorly enough that I'm mispronouncing it twice, forgive me. Um, normally I do this on my computer. I, that's been the running joke this whole week is like, well, I would. Um, but uh, Matt's, or Mott's Rosenquist, Dan Breckbeel, uh, and Edgar Allen Toe are all patrons that upped their pledges immediately. Like once they found out about it, they, they upped their pledges. And that's so nice. That's really, really kind. And Honestly, you're, we're going to get to it, but this is the kind of stuff that made me feel like this weekend was not um, a total loss in the sense that I just feel so loved <laughs> all around. Um, and that's that's the best part. I'm already starting to tear up. I'm, I'm going to try not to do that too much because nobody came here to see Jay cry. And that, that no. Uh, and the new patrons who I think jumped on, they jumped, whether or not they jumped on because of this or not, that I appreciate. Walter Inman, uh, Debbie uh I should have written this more clearly. Kozielek, uh, Miguel Chavez, Frank Days, and Patricia Ryan. Thank you guys for jumping on board. I really, really appreciate it. And then already on Kofi, before this ever happened, Don Davis, again, Mats Rosenquist, uh, Avery Adams, Stephen Bullock, uh, Mike B, and uh, Shanda Beverly. Thank you. Just thank you for being proactively kind and generous. And uh, I'm in my laptop without my computer. I can't do anything uh, beyond sit here and talk to you like this. So the editing and... I was gonna get on top of my accounting this week, so I'm getting a forced vacation from accounting. It's not good, <laughs> but I'm, I'm taking it. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Um, so thank you so much to you, uh, to you guys. Now, the story that it, it brought you all here tonight, if you've seen my Instagram stories, uh, if you have followed along, if you're a patron, you've heard a little bit. But basically, it was a little bit something like this. We were having an apéro. So an apéro in French is like, um, you know, it's a wee drink. A snack, it's what you do, it's what you do before um, a meal, usually. Uh, it's the best. When you're with a French family, um, if you happen to ever date somebody who's French or if you just have French friends, uh, in the city we do apéro, it's just like a happy hour kind of a thing where you go and you meet at like six or seven, uh, whenever everybody gets off work and you have a couple drinks, maybe a snack, uh, and then you, you go have dinner later because dinner is eaten later here than where I'm from in America. Uh, and so we're having an apéro. I'd put up what, how to spell apéro on the bottom, if only I had the ability to. So um, we, uh, <laughs> we uh, were hanging out, it was good, some friends, and we were at this place that I'd never been before, in a square that actually I've walked by a million times, I never, I don't think I've ever, maybe I stopped once. I know Richard's been there once because he showed me where there was a space in bigger there one time. Um, but we were, let's see if we can, this is my old phone, so it's a little bit cracked. It's struggling to exist, it was freaking out on me earlier. But this is kind of a shot of where we were at. So you can see that there's multiple layers of tables on the outside, and layers on the inside. And then we are back here uh, on this bench table situation right there. And we're actually the ones that we switched the, that long, gross table right there was falling apart when we sat down. So we swapped that out at some point. Whether or not it had happened then or before, I don't know. But we were sitting there and on this bench, you may be able to tell there's a tree right next to the bench, not a ton of space between them. Uh, and I was sitting on the bench and I just put my bag on the end of that bench. But like I said earlier, if you've ever seen, if you've ever seen, uh, or if you'd heard me before say this, uh, I'm really paranoid about my bags. Like I put them where they can't be gotten most of the time. I wrap straps around my legs. The Peak Design 
Uh, backpack has a strap that goes across the chest, you know, to kind of help pull it forward and, and keep a little, you know, share the load with your chest, I guess, off your back. And uh, I usually will actually wrap that around something a couple times and, you know, loop it in because it's got a nice little hook on the end. So that if nothing else, you know, it pulls the chair with it if they try to take it. Um, I'm usually really thoughtful about this stuff. I'm not going to say I'm always thoughtful. I, mean, I You get comfortable. And there's certain places and parts of the world that you get comfortable, parts of Paris, friends and so forth who make you comfortable. Um, and for whatever reason, we were, we were, we were, it felt like we were really deep in the terrace and I just, I just put it there and, and instead of like keeping an arm on it or anything like that, you know, just kind of chilled, we're having our apero. And uh, as we're going, excuse me, I also don't have a mute button, so if I have to burp, I'm just going to bail uh, and then come back like that. I should have been having fizzy water. I should have been having regular water. I should know this by now. Um, <laughs> but what, uh, what happened was uh, we're just sitting, chilling, having a grand old time, as usual. And uh, all of a sudden, it, not, nothing really caught my attention. I don't know what it was, but just all of a sudden, I just was like, where's my backpack? Like, what? And it was just immediately like, wait what and so get up look look under the you know table under the bench I'm like ah crap like i knew immediately i knew it was gone and it was just like yeah so go walking do a little stroll kind of you know check everything out find the waiter do you guys have cameras the neighbors nobody has cameras of course so i'm just like okay uh crap so my immediate thought is well i need to like try and lock down my laptop like i have to and i have to change my passwords like as fast as possible because i figured you know what like the worst, the worst would be uh, actually like full on identity theft, and who knows what they would get out of my uh, out of out of the computer. So I get on my phone, and as I go into it, I'm like, I should change. I'll change my Microsoft password. I don't know that that even matters, but I'm going to change it really quickly so they can't log in. Uh, I was like, wait, what about find my device? So I, I go, and it's like, oh yeah, there's that option, and I click on it, and it's been pinging, and it's on Ile de la Cité. So at this point, let's see if I can pull up a map for you. Ba, 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 ba. This is your map, map finding, map of Paris, your map finding intermission. So, ooh, let's see if we can do this. We were in, oh, uh, so you see where the pink thing says Leal? We're more or less in right where, where were we? Right where, oh, actually kind of where that, that line Leal meets with the line Le Marais. And out here on the tip of Ile de la Cité, the island, was supposedly my laptop. There was a, a little round nubbin, and I was like, that nubbin is gonna get got. And I just took off, I started running. So I just started, I was like, freaking, I'm going for it. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get this thing back. So I go running in my vans, which my physio is gonna hate me for, because she hates the vans. Um, <laughs> gonna have to transition away. The reason I wear vans, side note, is because nobody else makes shoes big enough for me in France. Um, one of the ongoing problems of living here among a few. So I go running for it and uh, my friends are texting me because they're, you know, immediately like, well, good luck. I go running and they want me to share my location. So I share my location with them as I'm going, but it's, it's, not a, it's not a short run. It's not a long run, but it's probably like a kilometer away. So I'm running, crossing the river and going. And as I'm refreshing the thing, it's showing uh, that uh, it's at la uh, the, is it la conciergerie. It's at the conciergerie. So it's at it's in on la cité, and it's pinging like right in the middle of the the palais de justice of the the Supreme Court, basically. Obviously not there, unless maybe the cops already picked it up. Maybe they've got a hold of it. So I'm like, okay. So I run straight to the cops that I can see that are you know barring the gates. Uh, and they give me the initial like, hey, like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, I, I've just stolen help, you know. So I show them and I talk to them in French. <laughs> I didn't say stolen help. I was like, je me suis fait voler. I think, it's, I think that's how you're supposed to say it. I feel like my, my brain is, is completely fried from the weekend. So forgive my terrible French. But we were talking and they were just like, they listened to me. And they're like, okay, okay. Like, you need to stop trying to chase these people down first and call 17. 17 is 911 for the police, basically. It goes straight to the police here. Everything's kind of divided up. So I'm like, okay, I'll call them, but I'm gonna do like just one, I'm just gonna go around the block while I call them. And they're like, all right, but like call them, they'll come. So I was like, okay. So I call the police and I'm walking down the side of the, the front of the conciergerie and take a left on the K. So I, you can't see my hand as I make that direction, but I walk around the front and I'm walking along the river waiting and it didn't take long, but within like 10 seconds, I was talking to a, um, a man who was asking me what my emergency was. And I told him, you know, I've been, I've 
been stolen. I think I just told, I think I said I've been stolen. <laughs> I mean, he, he got it and he was like, oh, okay, I'm going to get you right to those people. So he forwards me onto them. And this woman's like, hey, what's your deal? And so I just told her I, I just got robbed. Uh, I didn't see it happen. I didn't see the person, but I'm tracking my laptop right now and I am running. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm running through the rain and it's raining out. Like it's, it's not like it's spitting rain as uh, I, I don't know. I don't remember if it's the Brits or the Australians or who says that, but it's spitting rain, which is a great term. And I'm not dressed for this. Uh, and I'm just, I'm feeling there's one of these vans, I got them in an outlet, has this, a nub this size right under like the ball of the left foot it was a mistake. I didn't realize it until, uh, you know, two days later, but woof. So I go around the, uh, towards, um, the square, the Prince square, you know what it is, right towards Pont Neuf. Uh, and so I give her my location and she's like, okay, stop right there. I'm going to put you in contact with the back and the back I came to learn, I, which is confusing because, uh, the French, French students pass le back. Le bac is, um, is the, the, you're basically your essay. It's not your essay, even your SATs. You have to pass it to, to pass high school. So that's all I know when I hear that. But she's like, I'm going to put you in contact with the back. And I'm like, that's really not what I need right now. But the back, it turns out, are the guys who are in civilian clothing. So these are the hardcore guys that like jump out of vans and tackle people and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. She's like, I'm going to put you in contact with these guys there. And she explains to me that they're in civilian clothing. They're going to come find you in a car that's not marked blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, um, this is kind of unexpected, but kind of awesome. And so the lady literally on the phone while she's there, she confirms my identity. Um, she, and she can see everything of course, cause it's tied to my cell phone bill. So she's just like, okay, verifying a few things as she's getting a hold of somebody. And I hear her talking to this guy on the phone and she's just straight up like, she's just like, uh, you know, okay. He's, he's, his bag's been stolen. His computer's inside along with a few other valuables. Um, you know, giving him a little bit of the rundown and then she gives him my phone number and she's like, okay, he's gonna call you. And right as she hangs up, he calls. So immediately I'm basically handed off uh, to uh, the, la, is it, la, I'm seeing somebody saying, I, I'm trying not to pay attention to the comments because I don't wanna get too distracted, but it's all about le and la in the situation, masculine and feminine. Why, we, let's just make up more words. And so the guy calls me right away. He's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, what's what's going on? Where are you? Um, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, at the back end of the conciergerie. Here's my address. I'm like, I'm looking at Pont Neuf and he's like, okay, but you, and so what, like, what does your bag look like? Whatever. And of course I tell him the whole story, but very quickly tell him the it's, it's pinging GPS, not really GPS. It's, you know, pinging Wi-Fi networks. So it's not really very accurate, but at least, you know, like it's moving. And so la, thank you. Okay. So it's la, la back. Okay. So la fac, la back. I'm getting some good help in the comments. I'm going to, that's very helpful. We're learning together. So I'm just like, yeah, I, uh, I, I can see it right now and it's moved across the river. So it's near Pont Neuf and, uh, and it's moving. And he's like, okay, like keep telling me where it is. We're going to come and get you. Um, you know, just stay right there. And, uh, and then I don't know, I don't know if it was right then or, or quickly after, as I was telling him it was moving and he realized that I could just help him better over the phone. He's like, no, no, we're just, we're just going to go get it. Like we're going to go. So I'm like, okay, so I'm like, do you mind if I like start walking that way? Because everybody told me to stop. And he's like, yeah, no, come on, come on over. So I walk down the K, uh, this is the right bank, right? I, I turn right on Pont Neuf and I'm just talking to this guy on speakerphone, look like refreshing my GPS and be like, it's on this street now. And of course I'm mispronouncing half the street names, not because I can't, but just because that's what's happening. And some of them I've never read before. Some of them he doesn't, may not even know what they are. And so I can hear him in the background as he's getting ready. He's like, I, I was it Kareem, I think was the name of one of the guys. He was just like, Kareem, you're with me, you, this way. Like just starts directing people, shouting, shouting them and comes back to me. And then it's like, oh, let's go. And they pile in a car from all I can tell. I'm just hearing this. It sounds like they pile in a car. They're going, one of the guys, you know, they're up, yeah, he's just like, they're just like complaining about the traffic. You can hear them whoop, whoop a couple times. And it's just like, holy crap, these guys are like, really you're gonna react to this this is this is crazy um so i'm walking i'm feeling maybe a little bit hopeful i'm like there's really not a good chance that this is gonna work out but maybe it will i don't know so i'm crossing the bridge of course anybody walking by me at this point can hear like me radioing into a tactical squad at this point like just the chirping and the yelling and everything and I'm going between like trying to talk to them to flipping through. And as I'm looking at it, I'm like, this, I feel like this is a cell phone number. And he's obviously talking to me. So I was like, can I just 
like text you a picture of the backpack? And he's like, yeah, that would be great. So I sent him the fastest thing I can find at that point is a link to like an ad for my backpack. Not the best. And you'll find out why uh, shortly. Never do, never do this. But I sent him a link to that. And he's like, okay, okay, cool. And then I was like, can I just send you screenshots? Cause like I can screenshot the map as I refresh the location of my computer. And he's like, yeah, yeah, do that. So then on a Samsung device, it's, it looks really weird if you don't have one, but you just, you just swipe across the screen like that to take a screenshot. So I'm like walking the, of course the rain is screwing with me. And then hap, like I have to, I, I'm much better at it now over the course of the evening. But at the beginning, every time I went to do that, I like flung the map off in the corner and took the most useless screenshot and like, I have to get it back. So do it again. But every time I refresh it, it, it jumps. So it like moves from one location to another. And it's just like, and it occasionally just loses the exact location and puts it in le quatrième. So it just puts it in the fourth arrondissement, which is not helpful. And so I'm like, okay, I have to, like, I know when it's jumping back down to the river, there's a good chance they're not hanging out on the river, like at the police station is basically what it's telling me or the court. Pretty good chance that's not the case. So I'm just refreshing it and ignoring when it's saying like, yeah, you're back on the island and focusing on the northerly direction. And at first they're like, maybe on the Metro. So you're hearing these guys talk through all the process, like, or all the possibilities. And like, maybe they're on the Metro, maybe they're, you know, maybe they're, maybe they, maybe they grabbed scooters, blah, blah, blah. And they're talking amongst themselves and then they get out and they start moving. And I, I don't know if, again, I don't know if they were in cars, how long they were in cars, what, cause I'm just interpreting what I'm hearing. But there's like, Attendez, attendez, on contrôle le mec en ce moment, on vous envoie en photo, which is like, we're, we're stopping a guy to check him out and we're going to send you a photo. And so I get this photo, which I don't think I have, unfortunately, on this phone. Again, I would have showed you on that phone if only I was able to use other devices, but maybe I have it saved. Oh, yeah, 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 hold on. Oh, no. Maybe you saw it in my stories. Here we go. Yeah, perfect. I'm going to try not to show the guys the police officer's phone number here, but he sends me this. And he's like, is that your, is that your bag, you know, on the phone? He's talking to me while he's sending me these. And I was like, no, <laughs> but, but holy crap, dude, like these guys are serious. Like they're really going for it. So like, okay. And you can see like, this is like what the screenshots look like. If you didn't see my, my stories on Instagram. Thanks, Lucy. Appreciate that. By, by both. I really appreciate it. Um, so that's what they, that's what they look like. Uh, right? So I'm sending them these and I just keep sending them screenshot after screenshot. And ironically, I've all, ever since high school, for those of you that may have noticed this, nobody, I don't, nobody commented on this, uh, that I saw, although I don't really see most of my Instagram messages. And I'm really sorry if I, if you comment, if you left the funniest comment in the world and I missed it, I'm sorry for both of us, but I have always, um, ever since my very first computer, when I was like 18, that I built with a friend, uh, windows asks you to name your device. And of course I named it like the tower of doom. Cause it was this massive computer tower. And I thought that was cool. Whatever. And I've just kind of always paid homage to that original computer by always naming my computers something of doom. Uh, this one's not very creative. This one's just laptop of doom. Um, I'll do better next time, I promise. But so for all of for those of you that saw laptop of doom plastered across um, all of these screens, I'm sorry. Uh, but you can see, uh, making sure that I don't think there's anything sensitive on here. Uh, you can see as I'm going, like each, it just keeps jumping. The location keeps jumping around really, really quickly. Just bop, 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 bop. It's just like all over the place. And so I'm like apologizing to these guys because I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm really sorry. Like, it's not that accurate. I'm sorry. And they're like, no, no, this is great. Keep sending it, keep sending it, keep sending it. And they, they're really encouraging. They're really nice. And, um, and so you hear them talking and they're like, oh, maybe he's like, is it a MacBook? I was like, no, it's a, it's a Razor. It's, it looks like a Mac, but it's black. And he's like, okay, oh, uh, uh, like maybe the McDonald's. And they, I think they saw people on like their laptops. So like, we're going to go inside. And we're going to check out these laptops. And so they, they're just like cruising and trying to, they're just going everywhere and asking me questions. And so I'm trying to find them photos of my computer, but it's so hard to be on speakerphone, refreshing GPS and trying to find like photos of your own stuff to send to these guys. It's just confusing. It's not confusing. It's just, it's too much. So I'm trying to do it all at once. And I'm finding them some, I had some photos that I'd taken for scale because like the battery on my computer had been swelling and so that the lid couldn't close all the way anymore and I could actually fit a two euro coin in there. So that was one of the photos that I, I finally found to send, which is useless. I was like, well, this is the color at least. And if you can't close it, it's probably mine. Um, and I found them a picture of like the, um, of one of my, I have, you know, this guy, this Space Invader guy, one of the stickers because the sticker's on the back. Um, and so I sent that. Thanks, Stephanie. I appreciate that very much. And so I sent them a picture of this 
And uh, I was like, there's a sticker of that on the back. I must have taken it off. And so they kept going and they kept looking and they kept talking to me and I kept apologizing and they kept being like, don't apologize. And then at the end, they were, they were really, really nice. Thanks, Elaine. They were really, they were, they were just like, they tried for like 30 or 45 minutes. I don't even remember how long it was. Cause I was, I think I was on the phone with the police for a total of like an hour. So they probably tried for like 45 minutes and they were bouncing around. And it was so funny to hear them just like in the background when he's like giving them the new location and then being like, just being like, what's all possible? So it's just like, you could hear that they were like really like into it. It felt like, you know, the movies like it's a spy movie or anything where you've got the nerd in the van somewhere looking at a tablet, like he's two floors below you. Like I was that guy for a minute. I was the commander of the tactical squad from a distance and uh, they were super cool and they couldn't find it. And they were like, you know what? At this point, we really, uh, we just don't think it's gonna, it's gonna happen. Uh, we, we just don't think we're gonna be able to find it. And I was like, you know what guys? Thanks, uh, Vesalius. Uh, they were just like, yeah. Anyways, I, I thanked them. And it was cool too, because they weren't in a hurry to get off the phone. They were very much, they, he kept talking to me for a minute. I really wanted to go like, just shake their hands. Cause I was just like, they put in such an effort. Um, and it, I mean, it was just, it honestly felt like they put in so much more of an effort than I would have expected um, at all. So I talked and I was like, so do I, what do I do? I just need to go and file a police report tomorrow. Like what? And so he's like, yeah, go in. Like just whatever's closest to where you live is fine. Um, file a report and uh, you can tell them whatever you need. You can tell you can give them our number. You can tell them, you know, what happened here and everything else. Um, and we're really sorry. And the, he, he apologized to me, you know, multiple times. So he was just like, what, you know, like we're, we're really sorry, we tried. And so you could t I could tell that they felt bad. Um, and so we, we just had, I don't know, we just talked for a minute and it was, it was really nice of him. And so I, I felt, you know, I felt kind of cared for in a way, which is nice. And after, after the um, having to take Kate in to file a report uh, last week and then having this experience, just like, was like, okay, like just makes you feel a little bit safer in a way to have these kinds of experiences, ironically as you get stolen from. So I walked back and one of the things I didn't say was uh, my buddy Daly, when we were having the apero before, he'd come back, he'd gone to feed his dog and come back and brought me a scarf because it was getting cold and I didn't have enough. My clothing wasn't warm enough uh, over there. I was gonna go get it, but I'll just stay here. And uh, when I came back, he was just like, you know, would it make you, your day a little bit better if I let you keep that? And I was like, yeah, I really like it. But I was like, I can't keep this. Like you just said it was your favorite scarf. Like, how can I keep this? He's like, no, no, you have to, you keep it. Will you wear it? And I was like, yes, He's like, keep it. So that's my new favorite scarf. Um, so I went through the process of like, you know, I'd already, I'd already shut down, changed a few passwords. I changed um, a bunch of different things. Um, went through, uh, had to call Nintendo because my Switch was in there. The reason I had my Switch in my backpack was because I was taking it to the Chateau. I'd had it here for uh, an evening of Smash Bros a while back, a few weeks ago. It's been a long time since I played Smash Bros. And so I took it back with me. I was taking it back because my family, uh, my dad and my sister and my brother-in-law and I like to play uh, Mario Kart or something, you know, uh, once a week so we can talk on the phone and just play games. And so I just bought uh, Mario Party because my dad really wanted to play Mario Party. And uh, so I just bought it. I hadn't even opened it. I just downloaded it, never played it, and it's gone. <laughs> so the nice thing is because I downloaded it, um, you know, I can download it again on another device, but I had to get a little bit of help figuring out how to dissociate my account from that console, which thankfully you can do. Um, and of course, detached my payment method and everything else from it. And uh, then I was like, well, let me, let me, hold on. I can't really hear you very well, but let me put my headphones on. My headphones were in the backpack. So I had a couple of moments like that. Um, my dad gave me a really nice notebook. Kate's notebook survived. Kate gave me a notebook not that long ago, which survived. Um, because it, it was here, and uh, but that one I had taken with me because it had some notes for the week. Um, and it's gone as well, obviously, as well. So it was just a bunch of those realizations. I think I luckily had taken like this, this microphone had been hanging out in the side pocket. This is my, you know, my fuzzy catted microphone for um, my real camera. Thankfully, my cameras were here. I took this out very last minute because I was like, you know what, I'm, I want to travel light and I, I, I don't want to tempt myself uh, to film this week. Uh, cause thankfully the timing on that front, I was going to be again, focusing on my accounting this week instead. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so, you know, could have been worse. My keys were still in my, my keys were in my pocket. My wallet was in my pocket. My phone was in my pocket. Um, could have been so much worse. So I kind of focused on that and you know, my friends were nice. They, they were lovely. They bought me the, the drinks that we'd had. 
Um, and I went home and uh, talked to some family and just kind of tried to be like, you know what, I'm going to sleep. And I was exhausted. I'm actually still really exhausted because what's really weird about it, there's more, there's more to the story. Don't worry. I, I try to hunt it down the next day because I'm not just going to let this go. Um, yeah, I mean, eventually you have to, but what was weird about it was that when it was gone, it was just gone. It just ceased to exist, which, you know, object permanence is a thing that I finally mastered not that long ago. I don't know when exactly, don't really keep track of these things, but when an object um, is out of sight, it still exists, but it felt like because it was there and then it wasn't, did it ever exist? Did I actually bring it with, maybe it's still there. It was a really weird feeling. Um, and to be honest, I was like, I was, I was a little bit, I was a little bit, um, I was, I was a little bit sad about the little things. I'm, I'm frustrated because there's stuff on that computer that I probably won't get back. And there's some projects and some things I was working on um, and some things that I, I don't know if I backed up. I just backed up. I have a hard drive here that I just backed up all of my vlogs. Uh, so everything except maybe the final project file of the last video that I uploaded is on here. Um, and I'm generally really religious about backing stuff up. I just, I don't, there are certain things I don't think I had backed up because, um, you know, life and whatever else. Um, but I was just like, I was just, it's that, there's a sense of, uh, kind of, I don't know, a, not even helplessness. It, it didn't, I don't feel stupid. I don't, I didn't make, I made a little mistake. Um, and, but I didn't feel like beating myself up over it. I just felt kind of disappointed a little bit in other human beings for a minute, but also like buoyed because my friends were so nice and there and so many of my friends, uh, have been there. So the next day. Uh, you know, I go in for a coffee. I skip my run, uh, meet some, meet some friends. Speaking of friends, Paul from the Peloton texted me. He was like, dude, come down, get, you know, get a coffee and a waffle. Like, and I went down and, uh, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go investigate. Like, I'm going to go see if I can figure this out. Like, I'm not giving up. I can still see it. It's resting in basically the same spot pretty consistently. So I'm going to try and go see if I can. I don't know. I'm just going to go look around because there are a few different options. You can go and you can look in the lost and found. Uh, at the Metro. The Metro, if they bring a lost item to the Metro, they will keep it. And I learned, I didn't know this, but I learned that they'll keep it for 24 hours before handing it over to the police at the central. There's a central lost and found office in the 15th. I've been there once before. It's massive. I, I do not envy those people for all the all the, the junk that they have to file through, they have to go through. So I figured I'm going to go look around. Uh, I'll see what I find. And then once I've kind of done that due diligence of going to these places, I'll go to the police and file a report. But before I do that, I want to see like maybe, I mean, I'm looking in, you know, bushes. Um, I'm just looking around because maybe they ditched it. Maybe it's under something. Maybe it's in a, a dumpster, uh, something not so easy to find. Um, and I didn't find it. Spoiler alert, obviously. But I did go into multiple metro stops. I wound my way through like a bunch of buzzer doors to get into the security offices at Le Al. Uh, and then eventually went to the police and the police in the third, they were really nice. Again, they, they were like, Hey, look, there's like a two to three hour wait here. There's a bunch of people in front of you, but, uh, we'll call for you and see if we can find a better spot that's close by. And so they did, and they found a spot that had no wait over in the fourth, uh, by Bastille. And so I was like, okay, I'll go do that on the way. Of course, I checked a few more spots and then went, um, and they, they were, they were nice enough. They were just more bored at that station, uh, but they took me upstairs, took my, you know, deposition, I guess. They just took my complaint. I got the serial numbers and all that stuff, chatted, joked around with them a little bit. Um, and then was like, okay, went and had lunch with my friend, Jess, who was kind enough to buy me lunch. Again, I just feel like, I just feel like my friends just showed up the whole day to, you know, just be supportive and be kind. And so we had lunch. Um, and then we were also worried that like restaurants and everything were going to be closed uh, this week. So we were like, well, let's have one last meal uh, before we're, we're eating at home uh, forever. Um, and so went and uh, I think I, I think, oh, that was the thing. What I discovered was as I was going uh, around, there was a cash express and the cash express is like a, a pawn shop. And it's like right in the middle of where the dots are bouncing. So I was like, OK, I'm going to see if I can come back when they open on Monday and try this out. Uh, next day, we roll in, Cash Express. The thing is that on the way to the Cash Express, the reason I said don't, uh, don't, you know, link an ad to a police officer 
is because there's another area that I was looking, it's called the Bon Coin. The Bon Coin is basically the French Craigslist and it's immediately where stolen goods are gonna end up. Stolen bikes, stolen whatever, you know, straight to the Bon Coin. And so I, uh, I'm, I'm scrolling, I'm looking through computers and the Bon Coin has a lot of advertising and their advertising decided that, hey, this guy wants a Peak Design backpack. So every third or fourth listing was a Peak Design backpack. So every time I was going, I was like, is that, shh, is that, like, I just kept like scrolling, like, hey, you know, and so that was my pattern as I was scrolling. I was like, hey, rawr, ha, rawr. so it became a little bit emotionally fraught and um, I couldn't handle that for more than like 15 minutes, but I was looking, kind of prepping myself to go in uh, and I was just like, all right, let's just go look, play it cool. Just like look around. I don't know that I really want to ask directly if they've got it or not. And theoretically, if they're on the level, they have to check their, you know, uh, serial numbers against the police. Uh, so hopefully they'll do that if they get it. But I walk through and they've got computers, but not my computer. They've got bags, but they're mostly purses. Uh, they've got some Nintendo Switches, but they're like Switch lights. Um, and an old Nintendo 64 and a GameCube. And I was like, I kind of feel like starting up a new collection today, but nope, no, 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 I can keep going. Uh, a little bit of retro gaming. Also guitars, I haven't played guitar in a long time. I was like, hmm, get a guitar. Um, and so I was walking through and it was kind of, it was a weird, I, mean, I haven't been in a pawn shop in forever. And you're just kind of like sleuthing around and there was nothing. And so uh, thankfully, um, again, I could list off all the, all the kindnesses that were done to me. I feel like, um, you know, Kate treated me to a beer. My friend Catalina uh, bought me coffee. Um, just a lot of really nice moments from uh, from different people. A lot of people reached out and said nice things. Um, but, I, you know, eventually you got to let it go. So I still do refresh every once in a while to see if it's moved. Um, and at some point, I suppose the laptop is going to get wiped or who knows what's going to happen to it. I did put a lock. You're able to put a message, a lock message on it with my phone number saying, please give me my computer back. Will they? Odds are good they won't. Um, so... Uh, you know, I guess the result of all of this, more than anything for me, weirdly enough, is that I feel very thankful. And the reason that I feel really thankful is not that my stuff got stolen. That sucks. And it's actually a really big cost. Um, obviously, I was thinking about getting a new computer anyways, because if, if you've been following along on Instagram, I don't really complain about it on my vlog. But like, I do, I, I refrain from complaining about it too much, like especially on Twitter. But occasionally, like my, it was crashing and the battery was literally swelling so that the trackpad was popping out. Um, so, you know, it was getting there. But I was hoping to like, you know, save for like six months. I was hoping to get a little bit more out of it before it died or got stolen. That wasn't really on my radar. Um, I called my insurance. I do have professional insurance that covers my equipment and accidents and all kinds of stuff. Took me a long time to get through to them, but when I finally did, uh, she looked at my contract and she said, well, we do cover theft, but only if you get uh, mugged, only if there's violence or breaking. So if you weren't assaulted and there was no property damage in the process, I can't help you. So I said, okay, this is useless. And useless it is, I suppose. Maybe there'll be a use for it someday. I don't know what I'm paying for. So. Uh, that is where, uh, anybody who is feeling like it, who is offered, and I know I've seen, I've seen some of your comments, thank you very much, and wants to pitch in, uh, is more than welcome to. Um, but it is something that I'm gonna have to do anyways, um, and you don't have to, don't feel obligated. I'm gonna get back to vlogging as quickly as I can. I'm gonna order a computer either way. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and get the one that I've been wanting to get for a long time. I've been wanting to get, um, I wanna stay within the Razer Blade series, but I wanna get something that, has the ability to handle 4K editing. Um, not that I'm gonna switch to 4K editing, but I wanna try it. I wanna play with it here in Paris a little bit. Um, and just something that would make my editing in my life easier, my workflow faster. Um, yeah, just was looking to, uh, I was looking to uh, grow up and upgrade in 2021 anyways. So I'm gonna try and make that happen as it is. Um, and yeah, I hope you'll still enjoy my stories. I hope you'll still be here for my vlogs. I hope you'll enjoy them. There's another, there's another couple of things that have happened this year uh, that have been kind of nuts. And what's interesting in, in, as a difference is that like the reason I didn't really get around to saying why I felt so thankful is because I felt so warmly supported by those of you who are, uh, well, I'm recording this live video with my phone, so it's, it's very mobile. Um, I really appreciate just how 
um, how kind everyone's been. My friends here, it's interesting between like the way that my, the way that everything kind of went down in the end, it, I just felt like I belong. I feel like I'm at home. I have such good friends here. Um, just a great sense of community and, you know, just, I, I felt, I still felt safe afterwards. And I think that's such a huge, if this had happened a few years ago, when I first got here, even after a year, I think it would have been devastating, both financially, like I really would not have been able to take that hit, but also um, emotionally and everything else. Like I'm so lucky that I have so many people around me who are looking out for me and able and willing to do anything to take care of it. Just even if it's just show up and bring me a snack or, you know, just try to make me feel loved. So uh, that's honestly why, like, I know it's, it's a crappy situation and it's an expensive situation and it stinks because I loved that backpack. I was looking forward to playing Nintendo with my family. Oh, I lost a controller too. I, I had a pro controller. Those are, it, it's all those little things. It's funny. And you forget because at the end of the day, it's just stuff. It's really just stuff. Thanks, Yanni. Oh God. Thanks, Yanni. I really appreciate that. You know, it's like, it's, it's just stuff and I, I'm still safe and I, I have the best you know, friends and online community, you guys have been so great and everybody just being so nice in Instagram and on Twitter and, you know, messages and on Patreon and everywhere. Um, I don't know. I just, it's weird to come out of something like this feeling like the luckiest guy alive, but I'm really, really lucky because this stuff happens. It's, you know, it's, it's nobody's fault in the end. There's somebody that professionally wanders through places like that and picks pockets. I have some friends who, or even Mark actually, who you may have seen recently, was talking about when the bar he used to work at this time of year, every year. Thanks, Paul. Uh, this time of year, every year, um, there's just people that focus on, you know, after hours, apero people. And uh, it's just what they do for a living. So, um, yeah, I, I unfortunately I fell prey to that. But um, I won't again, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just feel really lucky. The other story I was thinking about telling, I think I'll wait because uh, I think I might, I'll, I'll try to tell that in more of an edited format later. And we've already been going for like 41 minutes. But, um, you know, I really appreciate you all being here. And I really appreciate you listening to my crazy stories. And my stories when I'm a vlogging and when I'm a live streaming, even if this is just a super basic live stream on my phone. Um, I am really genuinely just the luckiest SOB. And I know it. And I really feel it. And you may not be able to tell that I've been like tearing up through this whole story um, on and off just because uh, I really... I really, really feel, I just, I feel like I felt so loved. Thanks for chipping in. Appreciate that. And Cahex on 100. I don't know how to say that. Um, <laughs> sorry for mispronouncing your name. I feel like you made that one hard though. Um, yeah, I guess that's really it. I, 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 I have a weird life and it's had some weird downsides that I'll talk about again soon. I've kind of hinted at some of you know about it. Um, that, you know, again, six months ago, I had something pretty dramatic happen and it completely turned me upside down for a month or two and I learned a lot through it. And now this has happened and it just was water off my back. And that is uh, a great lesson. Thank you, Sean and Lynn, I appreciate that. Um, and so it is water off my back, uh, but it also makes for good jokes. At least I think they're funny, joking about how I would do it, if only I could do it, <laughs> kind of stuff. Um, so I will start piecing my lost items back together as I go and I'll be back at it. Even if it's a little inconvenient or a little bit more challenging for a while or whatever, uh, I'll get back to vlogging next week and I will keep you entertained and informed and uh, give you the window into Paris and give you the window into my life and the weirdness that it is. Thanks Gonzalo, I appreciate that. Very much, cheers to you and the rest of you. I appreciate it so much. Thanks Trevor. Um, that's basically it. If you would like to pitch in, I would thank you for saying that. If you, I'm very grateful for the super chats. Thank you so much. If you'd like to pitch in, um, YouTube does take a 40% cut. So there's a Kofi link below. Um, but as always, no pressure. Thanks for just listening to my story. Um, and no worries. I, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be back at it. I will be back at it. Thanks, Sean. And I'm lucky. That's one of the, I'm so lucky that I can say that. That I know that like this is a big hit, but like I will get back up. Um, and so... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just so dang lucky. Thanks, Jasmine. I appreciate it. So 
Thanks to all of you. I will be trying. It's a lot harder. All of this, I usually would do all of my admin work for my phone. If you're a patron, I already, I already apologize for not being able to reply to my Patreon messages in a trustworthy or quick fashion right now. Um, I'll try to, I always try to thank everybody who ever gives on Kofi directly on Kofi. Uh, which I can do from the phone. It's just, again, it's not great, but I will try. Uh, if I miss you for whatever reason, I'm really sorry. Um, I want to thank everybody individually, and I'm going to try. Um, thank you so much uh, for listening. Thanks for hanging out. I wanted you to know uh, what was going on, why things were the way they were, and why there might be some hiccups, and maybe I won't get back to vlogging right away, um, but we'll get back to it one way or another here soon. And I'm going to trim the beard. It's getting, I mean, it's a nice winter beard, but it's getting a little bit too, too jowly. I'm seeing that now. I haven't seen myself on camera for a few days, and it's like, absolute. Boom. Anyways, I think that's it. I think that does it. I think that uh, about wraps it up. I got no more notes. I do have another story to tell, but I'm going to save that for another time because that's how I feel. And um, thank you again. Thank you. That's all. I, I mean, that's the for me. That's the that's the key takeaway from all of this is thank you. I'm really lucky, and if I don't stop there, I'm just gonna I'm gonna tear up and stuff, and that's not what you came here for. Have a nice night. See you soon.